a thousand miles, chapter three. You have two years. Papa, Mama yelled as she clutched the newspaper around her arms and ran across the freshly plowed field. Papa looked up and stopped the horse hitched to the plow. Yes, Mama, what do you need? Chief Ross was in the newspaper. He said the Supreme Court ratified an illegitimate treaty. Because of this, we're to move off our land in two years, Mama unfolded the newspaper. Two years? Impossible. The government will argue for another 20 years. We won't have to move anywhere. Mama disagreed. Not this time. Now it is final. It has been almost six years since the Indian Removal Act was signed into law. The debate raged on in Washington, but life for the Rivers family had gone on as usual. Dustu, 11 now, was quickly becoming a young man. Imokali, now eight, was a bubbly and carefree girl. We're not leaving, Papa declared. This fight is not over in Washington. Chief Ross will not fail us. Other families are packing to leave. They want no trouble from the army. My cousin Tana says her husband wants to leave. She wants to stay though. They have no right to make us leave. They have no right to take our homes. We stay. Tell Tanis and her husband to stay. Papa's deep voice echoed across the field. Dustu and Emmy had been playing near the stream and they heard their, their father's thundering voice. They ran from the stream to the field. Stay where? Dustu asked, asked his parents. Here, we stay here, Papa said. Dustu looked confused. Why would we go anywhere? The government has given us two years to move west of the Mississippi River, Mama told Dustu and Emmy. We're moving? Emmy practically cried. No, we're not moving, Papa declared. We have two years, Mama said. That's a long time, Dustu said. Not so long when you have to find a new home, Mama looked from Dustu to Emmy. She tussled both children's hair as if to reassure them that everything was fine. I don't want to leave my friends, Emmy stammered. She was on the verge of tears. I won't leave my pony or the dog, Dustu said. Frustrated, Papa spoke up. We stay. The chief will fight this again in court. I'm going to town to see the Aldens. Henry might know more about the plans. Come with me, Emmy. You can play with Henry's little sister. Dustu tugged his sister's hand. We'll be back by supper, he told his parents. Dustu and Emmy walked the two miles into town. The Alden home was large, stately, with a brick front and white columns. The property was lined with magnolia and oak trees. Each time Dustu came to visit his friend, he was always impressed with the grand house and gardens. It was so different from his own small wood cabin outside of town. Dustu had met Henry Alden at a spring carnival a few years before. Both boys became fast friends. They loved a good joke and a good fishing hole. Their lives couldn't have been more different. Dustu's parents were farmers. Henry's father, Josiah Alden, was a high-ranking officer in the Georgia militia. His mother was from a rich cotton growing family. Mr. Alden liked to brag about all the special assignments he had as an officer. Mr. Alden, or Captain Alden, as he was supposed to be called, was opinionated, sharp, and thought he was always right. Dustu found Henry lazily swinging from the overhanging branch in an oak tree. Hello, Dustu, Henry sang out as he swung from the branch and dropped to the ground with a loud thud. Hey, Henry, looks like you're having fun. Just passing time until mother calls me in for supper. Henry, did you hear the news about the removal? Mm-hmm, Henry nodded. Father said that some of your people are already moving west. Is your father in the removal? He's in the militia, Dustu. He has to follow orders, whatever those orders are. We're not leaving. That's what my father's decided. If you don't move, they might arrest your father, Henry said. Where are we supposed to go? Just leave our house? Dustu was angry now. Henry made it seem as if the decision to leave was so simple. Would you just pack up and leave your house? Dustu waved his arms in the direction of Henry's stately home. Father has said land in the West has been promised to the Cherokees. Your father can start fresh. Start fresh with what? We'll have to rebuild. New cabin, barns, start our crops all over again, build a new school. Father said this would be a new opportunity for the Cherokees. There's plenty of space out west. Georgia's getting crowded with settlers. They're trying to get into your Indian country anyway. They want the land and the gold that was found on Indian land. What does the West have for me? Henry shrugged his shoulders. I don't know. I've never been there. Clearly, it's not your problem. What kind of friend are you? Dustu turned and ran away home. Henry doesn't care at all, 
he thought angrily. Emmy, who had been picking wildflowers on the lawn, not paying attention to the boys, looked up in surprise. She dumped up and bolted after her brother. Why are we leaving so soon? We just got here, Emmy asked Deustu. We're going home, where people care about us, Deustu told her. <laughs>